What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Legal Report Pod. Uh, how y'all feeling today, fellas? I know, I know, we got tests and exams coming up. I got, bro, I got to clutch it. I got to finish like three essays. Up to, I think I have three essays due by Saturday to try to get exempt from this management final. Uh, so that's, yeah, yeah man. <laughs> Hey, you about uh, to I, I this this eight page paper, man. That's that's been trailing me all week. Yeah, about that time. Carl, Carl ain't got nothing, dude. Nah, eight page. I only got a two page paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many, finals do, how, how many finals do you have? How many finals do you have, Carl? I don't even have finals. They just it's regular exams. I only got two though. You only got two. Okay. I, th- yeah. I think so they not giving you all exams. No, nah, actually, no. Nah, I have three exams. None of them finals. But then the one that I don't have, he don't believe in tests or anything. We just have homework. When you say finals, I get what you're saying. When you say finals, you mean it's not comp- comprehensive. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Like I don't have, I don't have um well, I have if I if I don't turn these papers in by Saturday, I have like three comp I have a comprehensive one, uh, but then my finance one. Yeah, I've only got one comprehensive if I don't complete these papers. Um, and then I have a day on Wednesday actually where I have literally like three straight tests back to back to back, class after class after class. So I just took work off. I took work off like Tuesday and uh, Wednesday to study for those. It's about to be a year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Carl, teacher said tests are fake. That's hell of funny. <laughs> That's no, what he said. That. He said one, one of the teachers said, I don't believe in uh, comprehensive tests or exams at all. So next semester, for tests or whatever, we're gonna be just writing papers or whatever. So I think that's cool. Hey, any any way you can apply your knowledge, because it's like comprehensive stuff is like impossible to recall all that information. That's and what you, I'm saying. and you're never really studying to know it. You're just studying to apply to it. Remember. To the test. Yeah. Yeah. Cause sometimes you you don't necessarily know what's on the exam. I mean, you just remember the stuff that's on the exam. You don't necessarily have to know it a lot of yeah, times. That's true. Exactly. And so you just walk away, like you walk away from finals week exhausted. You ain't walking away thinking you learned anything new. Yeah. No, I, I tell you, bro, after after the finals, any other test, bro, that's that's leaving my mind so quickly. I'm not, I'm not thinking about it at all. I don't even stress about the, the grade no more. When I get the test done, the test is done. And I just do it and whatever happens. Yeah, after. I think like those first two years, I was like kind of self-conscious about it. But now it's just like, bro, yeah, whatever first happens. Semester, like above a B or something. That like. first semester freshman year was like, that was hell, bro. Sheesh. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. You had it, you, you had it tough your first semester, though, because you had like you start off with engineering. It yeah. was that that stuff is like engineering is like hell. That that stuff is ridiculous. Nah, oh, you are yeah. hey, yo, your advisor hated you. <laughs> lead, lead engineering for the goons. I don't know. I don't <laughs> for the goons. For the goons. Nah, yeah. You a different type of cat if you're doing an engineering stuff. That's, that's another level of knowledge. <laughs> yeah, man. I ain't I ain't with that stuff. Uh we had uh, a really good game on what was it, Tuesday night? Uh we had Suns versus Warriors. Mm-hmm. Um, most anticipated game of the season. So well, so highly anticipated that the NBA decided to cut Clippers versus Lakers, which I, I actually, th- yeah, which no, I'm, I'm, I'll say this now with the news, LeBron is coming back. Nah, the hell with, it. I mean, let's, let me think. It still wouldn't be a better game. They did the right thing. I think I'm not, you think I'm so? not ain't, ain't nobody trying to see them uh, speed walk up the court for, for an hour and a half. <laughs> Dude, but it was so good. The NBA decided to kick Clippers Lakers off ESPN on Friday night and replace it with Suns Warriors. I don't think I've seen that happen before. Has ESPN ever like just kicked games and then replaced them before? I'm sure yeah, they no. have. They, I'm sure I, they have. They don't get like. Yeah, yeah. they because I know the NFL flexes schedules all the time, but mm-hmm. the NBA isn't really known for just pushing the team out and putting. I, I've never seen it. They've probably done it before, like Blake said. I just never paid attention. I'm glad I tell you, you mentioned the, the NFL schedule is terrible. Yeah, that schedule is horrible. Dude. We got we got the Cowboys and Saints tonight. Dude, we, we, what are we? We um, we already in December and they still got like seven games left. Damn, really? Yes. Uh-huh. They added an extra game. They did. Wow, I didn't know that. But NBA too. Like, I'm glad they're flexing the schedules because I remember beginning of the season because there's so much stuff. Like, they make those matchups happen in the summer, right? And then they don't expect all these injuries. Like, I, I remember seeing the Pelicans on national TV one too they many times. Them. Yeah, them, yeah. It's like not worth watching them play. I, I get it. They anticipated Zion being there, but it was still like, nah. I don't even know if I want to see him on ESPN, even if Zion's there. Like, they're just, I don't know. They're just not that much of an entertaining team, uh, especially now that Alonzo's gone. Anyway. Yeah, Jonas Valanciunas has been their best player. He has been. Shout out to that dude, bro. I, I said he'd probably be most improved, if he, but he's on a really suckish team. And I don't know if he's going to keep doing that if Zion comes back, to be honest with you. He's been, he been balling, though. I give, I give him that. He has been balling. Uh, Blake, first reactions to that Suns-Warriors game? Mikael Bridges should be on a running for a defensive player of the year. Come on. And he he did an incredible job locking up Steph Curry. I saw a graphic on Twitter, uh, I think, yesterday. I think it's only been like five dudes that's held uh, Curry under 15 points in like the last five or six years. So 
He did he okay. did an incredible job uh last night. Okay. Not just him, but that whole Suns team. Uh, once Booker got out, they really rallied together, pulled that win off. So I'm, I'm looking forward to Friday. Did they did they play a game in between? Have they played another game in, in between? I think two? they have. They're about to. Maybe. They have a game tonight? They probably got a damn. They had hella games. Let me think. Some, somebody has to play. There's no way they get that much of a break. Yeah. Um, Both of them it, it, I, I would I would be more I would be I would be cool with it more if it was uh if they play I because I think I think Booger isn't playing in this game. So I'm not, yeah, I, yeah, he not. They keeping his hamstring injury look safe. Yeah. No, Michael Bridges was definitely amazing that game defensively from start to finish, you know, blocking shots. His length was definitely bothering Steph. On the other end, there were some times because I want to give the Suns credit for what they did defensively, but I know Carl knows there were there, just, there we go. There, we there go. were just shots. I mean, I guess the, are we making the same point? There were just shots he was missing where I was like, he'll make this. Like I remember he kind of came off a pin down, I think to the right elbow, and then he just mm-hmm. airballed it. And then I remember watching a breakdown today, and they were saying uh, the Suns defense. He they, they, he was trying to break down Curry's form and why it didn't work. I'm like, well, no, that's a shot. That's that's, that's yeah. kind of crazy. That's, yeah. yeah, you 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 know how you know how I talk. I yeah. say this. I give dude credit for defense, but those are shots that he normally makes. Yeah. Now come tomorrow, he I, I guarantee he will light the ass up. Yeah. I'm, I'm like that's like he's gonna probably have thirty points. Yeah, I'm Steph like, is one of the Steph is one of the better revenge game type of guys. Like whenever he screws up or whatever, and people start getting overcritical, he comes back and he does his thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I do want to give a bunch of credit as as Blake mentioned to Bridges. Um, you know and that's what they I paid him for. Him. You said what? Yeah. Uh, what did you say, Blake? I say forty. Oh, 40 for Steph? Yep. Okay. Oh, that, yeah. yeah, I mean, he, he is a revenge game guy. But like I said, Bridges was amazing, and that's what they paid him for. And you look at his other numbers, they didn't pop off at the stat sheet at all. He wasn't amazing offensively that game, you know, but he pretty much, I mean, was probably the most impactful guy just because of his defense and how he was able to bother uh, Curry defensively the entire night. And as a team, they looked amazing. You know, their rotations yeah. were very, very tight. This is a team that you don't want to try to – hunt a bunch of switches from because every position can switch and guard. You know, we see, saw DeAndre Aiden. I think he may have got a block or something like that on a Curry three-pointer. So that just speaks yeah. how great of a, a team defense Phoenix has, you know? Yeah. Uh, Aiden was balling too. He looked yeah. like uh, him, uh, fade away. He looking like Wilt out there. Yeah. You know? I, Will, uh, I saw, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, because Wilt, I ain't know. I just, this is a little, this inside thing. I didn't know Wilt used to shoot like fadeaways. I saw a YouTube clip. I was yeah. like confused. But you yeah, saw that YouTube um, clip. You saw the. You talking about the one where they colored it and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was kind of. That was kind of tough. That's though. tough. That's tough. Yeah, that's I, tough. I wonder if they can do that for like other uh, black. And white. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they can. They have before. But I was saying with stuff like I don't like how people like you say some of these superstars that have bad games and the media overreacts. What's wrong with Steph? What's yeah. wrong with KD? Like they human, just like y'all. They just yeah. so happen to be good at professional sports. Yeah, I think people forget that. I don't know how you feel about that. But. You're not gonna. You're not gonna be perfect. You're not gonna be perfect. Yeah. You're not going to be perfect for 82 games. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have your off nights. Um, This game, like, it was a great game. But as I said, this tells me nothing about, I mean, you can say this, this doesn't really tell me about if these two teams meet up, what the story is going to be. Like, it's it's been some matchups where, I mean, I I can't think of any off the top of my head, but it's been some matchups between two teams that we thought were going to be in the playoffs against each other and where we kind of saw them play. And then we just realized one team is just way too much for the other team. It's not the, it's not the same situation here. You know what I mean? I just think as, as Carl said, a lot of shots that Curry was missing, he's going to make, you know, in his next game is just not, we're just not going to see that. So we can give credit to Bridges and what that team did as a whole on the defensive end. But a lot of it was just Steph, uh, just missing shots that he normally make, you know. Uh, there, I mean, there were some positive things with Golden State too. You know, even though they lost, really they lost just late in the fourth quarter. Like it wasn't like they were getting blown out of the water uh, the entire night. And the cool thing about it is they were able to keep it competitive against the hot Suns team without their best player playing well. And their second option is Jordan Poole. And as we said it before, this Poole team is. What do you say? Poole had twenty-eight. Too. Yeah, yeah. So th- this goes to speak about how great these guys, this team's role players are. You know, Porter off the bench. I think Otto Porter had like 16 points off the bench and he's had a couple yeah. of really good games off the reserves this year for Golden State. So, you know, while we can talk about the negative stuff with the Warriors and all of that, it wasn't like they got blown out and there were definitely some bright spots. You know, he came off uh, and then got uh, or Jordan Poole came off and got 28. Porter got uh, got 16, you know. And so, I, like I said, I just think it speaks to how great their role players are. And that's going to be very, very important moving forward. And as we always say, without Clay being there, you know, to just imagine how scary this team is going to be once he's back in the lineup. So, uh, yeah. Credit to the Suns. You know, I, I'm glad you mentioned DeAndre Ayton too. Um, it goes to show you once again how great of a coach Monty Williams is. I think he recognized that Golden State was, uh, you know, trying to go small at some points in time, and they went down to him, and he ate. You know, and that's what you want to see 
from your yep. big guys, you know, is to recognize those mismatches and go right down at them. You know, that's stuff we want to see from Chris Stops Porzingis. You know what I'm saying? And, and yeah. you know, so that, that that was great big man play. And I think offensively, he probably just was, not probably, he was their best player that night, so. Oh, yeah, he that was he, I remember he got the ball down low against uh Bielisa and he just turned around so easy and just did like at least three or four hook uh jump hooks in a row. Yeah, it was yeah. just yeah, it was just playing just easy. Yeah. But um, I guess I can take away what I can take away from this game is it's impressive that the uh Suns were able to win without Devin Booker down the right. stretch. Yep. But then it was also kind of impressive to see the Warriors hanging there with Steph playing so bad. Yeah. So it's like a two way street. It really is. It really is. That's why it's going to be so fun seeing them play in the playoffs, you know, because when they, I mean, this is a really, when, when both teams are healthy, this is a well, really well balanced out. Like both of these are really well, well balanced out. It's a great matchup. One team isn't flat out just better than the other. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so we saw a lot of great stuff. As I said, the whole story can't be told because we don't know how things are going to look, you know, when Clay is there, you know, and obviously your defensive scheme is going to be a little bit different if you're Phoenix, when you have to worry about a healthy Clay Thompson, you know, being back in the lineup. Uh, but yeah, I mean, as you said, you got to give credit where credit's due. Great job by Bridges. Great job by that entire team on the defensive end. And that's the reason why they're able to pull out the win. You know, speaking about defense, Warriors had what about 22 turnovers that game, you yeah. know? So, and that's not character. That's not a characteristic of that team. So that just goes to show you how great of a two-way squad Phoenix is. And that's something we forget about is that they, I mean, last year, they were one of the best offensive and defensive teams. And it's the same way this season. Uh, after what was kind of a slow start to the year. I think Blake mentioned it a couple episodes ago uh, that they had a really, not not a really slow start, but they had a slow start the first couple of games. And then, you know, they finally got it going. So it was great to see a team that uh, is coming off a finals run play like this. And I, I actually, I can't say I can't wait for the next game because I want to see Devin Booker play and I'm just not sure about that. Uh, but we'll we'll see what happens next time around. So, yeah, yeah. yeah I doubt he plays because they said they wanted to keep his hamstring injury mm-hmm. kind of, you know, a little safe. They don't like, want him to. Like 10 days or so. Yeah. 10 days. Yeah, they don't want him to pull it or aggravate whatever whatever's going on. But yeah, I got Steph. I got Steph having, I don't know about you talking because Blake already said 40. I got I'm gonna change it. I got Steph putting up 35, 10 rebounds. 10 boards. Yeah, 10, 10 rebounds, seven assists. He's an underrated. The people are gonna listen to 10 rebounds and overreact. Curry is a very good rebounder for a point guard. You know what um, I mean? He's too. Yeah, yeah. Uh he I think he had a triple double. What was it the first game of the season against y'all? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to find a way to slip. I, I wanted to find a way to slip y'all in there and take some credit. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm better joking. watch your, better watch your back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I got Curry getting. Uh, I got him over. I, I'll be safe and say I got him over 25 points. Carl, do you want to put something else on this game for tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> same, same, same as you. You want to get in on that, Blake? What y'all got? You put it's a little measly little bet, little five bucks. Yeah, a little five. Yeah, change. You know. But well, the thing is, I don't know. I don't know how we go do it. If one person yeah. agree, it, it's not gonna work. Oh no, one person got to pay. What's one person picks the Suns, the rest yeah. picks the Warriors. Then no, you, I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna pick the Warriors. I know that. So. I think I, I got the Warriors bouncing back. I, I think they're gonna okay, take yeah. Booker not yeah. being there. I got them coming back. Actually, yeah, we'll pick it. We'll pick a different game because yeah, that yeah. won't make sense. Carl texted me in the middle of the game. He said, "You trying to put something on this?" I was like, "Yeah, why not?" He didn't think, he didn't think I would go. For, I paid him that money right after you. I said, "No, nah, I got to pay that." He said, "What's your cash app?" I said, "I don't even want it." He said, "No, nah, no, nah, I'm gonna stand He's on that." <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, yeah, good game. I mean, also too, like Golden State, as, as to your Carl's point that Curry was taken out of the game, their numbers across the board didn't look horrible. You know, they're solid shooting wise. They're around forty two percent, which is okay. You know, but when your best player is not playing well and you're, you know, relying on a Jordan Poole and those other guys to step up, 42% is pretty decent. Uh, 35% from three is pretty good, too. So, once again, it just speaks to how good this team's role players are without their second best player. You know, I think mm-hmm. I think there was a lot more I took from this game for Golden State on a positive end than I took from Phoenix on a positive end. That's taking no credit away from the Suns. I love Phoenix, and I do think they have every chance in the world to get back to the finals and potentially win it because I think I said it last episode, they are a tier one team. We all pretty much agree they're a tier one team out west, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, but I, but I, I took a lot from this game on the positive end from Golden State. Again, you cannot read, you can't read. You're an idiot if you read too much into the Steph Curry stuff. He's gonna bounce back and do what he does, even if Curry gets 15 and they win. Who cares? Because the thing about Curry is he keeps that offense flowing, and and that's a special part about his game is. People really talk about his ability to not have to dominate on the scoring end and still do a bunch of stuff to help his yeah. team win. You know what I mean? Yeah. He runs around a lot. He, yes. probably, he probably he up there is, is probably like being the like most in shape player in the league. Probably. Yeah, that's if what he's he not one. He too, I don't know, but 
that's what dudes talk about when they say they're guarding them is you just have to keep running around and checking them. And by the time you get to them, you just you figure out you, you didn't give them too much space to shoot. Um, I, I mean, just speaking on it, like the first play of the game, I think for the first the first bug, and this kind of speaks on his ability to keep orchestrating an offense and to keep things going, even when he's not playing well, if he's not shooting it, you know, he's effective without having to be the primary scorer or whatever. First play of the game, he gets it to the wing comes in and sets like a little flex screen for, uh, uh, I think it was Kevon Looney for a lay-in. So that, that just speaks on his ability uh, to be effective off the ball. He's one of the best mm-hmm. off-ball superstars in the league, you know? So mm-hmm. Curry needs his credit for his fundamentals and, and how he plays without being super flashy, you know? Yep. Yeah, I don't think he gets enough credit for being funny either because I don't mm-hmm. know if you all saw that Clippers game. If he got teched up, yeah, he hit, a, he hit a big three. He was like this. Oh, yeah, he did that. Hey, bro, Man. that was hilarious, bro. I'd be scared as hell to play Steph right now. He's on some, he on some other shit. What do you, what, what do y'all think is, uh, what was your favorite Steph game from this year so far? I think I got to put him in that Clippers game where he like, he just went, it was like the second game of the season. I think it was a bounce back against the yeah. Lakers. There yeah. was a yeah, Cleveland- I think, I think it's the Clippers. Yeah. Yeah. There was a yeah. Cleveland game, which was crazy too. That Cleveland game. Was oh crazy. no, the Cleveland game was my, I like the Cleveland game, but you yeah. should have, what you probably should have, what's your favorite Steph game ever? If you can. Okay. Remember. I know what's, mine. What's yours? Uh, one the New versus, York. The, the I, New York I said one versus the Wizards. I like the New York one. Which one was against? The, oh, that that Wizards one was that dope. Was that was hard. He uh, had like 50, 50 something in three quarters. Yeah, yeah. My favorite. That's a good one. A uh, car. What was the one you said? I like the New York one that kind of put him on the map. Yeah. When he used to be with uh Nike like yeah. a long time ago, and then yeah. I like the one against OKC when he hit that deep deep ass three. He had the dunks on in that Knicks game. That was the first time I really started seeing who he was. That was the first time a lot of people. Yeah, hyper dunks. Like, he was wearing yeah, hyper dunks. Yeah, dunks so that, yeah that, that put him on the map. That yep. game put him on the map. It was literally all from there. I mean, he was always a really solid point guard, you know. Like, he was over, like, 15 a game the first couple of seasons. Um, and then that, as you mentioned, that 2013 season, uh, he led that team to the playoffs, uh, went crazy and got, like, the 50-piece in that Knicks game. So that was yeah. up there because I remember watching that, and that was the first time. I remember seeing how good he really was because I started watching basketball around that time. Uh, there was the OKC game, but I'm a little, I'm a little different with that because I didn't see it, and I'm so mad that I didn't see it. You know oh, what I mean? Man, um, that, that that reaction. Let me tell you the reaction because OKC fans thought they had won the game. Yeah, this dude literally got the ball, looked at the clock, and it was still like five seconds. Like he just said, no, "I don't even care. I'm gonna shoot it." Yeah, and everybody on the everybody on the OKC bench looked at him like he. They, yeah, they, they, like, they were looking at Russ. They were looking yeah. at Russ like Russ. And Russ was like, I don't know what you want me to do. I, I saw like a fan footage of it and I saw it and I was like, of the, of the shot. And I was like, dude, I got to get to an NBA game because those arenas, bro, what you hear on TV, you can just hear when they record it from their phone. It's just a different type of vibe. Um, mm-hmm. But there's that OKC game. There's some playoff ones. Uh, there was um, game seven of the 2016 conference finals was dope. Against Dame? Against, not no. against Dame. This was against. Um, uh, the 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 thunder where they came they came okay, yeah, to the yeah. finals, uh, that yeah. was dope. Seeing them do that was it was funny too because I remember to look at disbelief on KD's face. <laughs> or even uh game six uh this is Clay Thompson no game six Clay that was a that's a top oh, 10 my game. God, yeah yeah oh yeah he was killing them there. Curry's got some ones man that just made you know and and like I said uh just goes to show you how long this dude's been doing it. I've I've been saying this and people have been kind of getting at me, but I, I remember saying look we're probably seeing I may have asked y'all this on the show once. Is this the best version of Stephen Curry we've seen? Oh, I, I can't, I can't never go against that one season seventy three. I can't do it because yeah. I've, I see, like I know he's making threes at a high clip now, but that dude was not missing because of Clay mm-hmm. Thompson. Clay Thompson was getting, he wasn't missing, bro. Like yeah. he, he, he had some games occasion this this year where he's been off. Yeah, that season I felt like he probably had three that whole yeah. that yeah. whole season. Yeah. What about you, Blake? Would you, would you, I mean, I feel like his bag is deeper nowadays. I don't know. Would you say this is the best version of Curry that we're seeing? It's tough. I, I, I think I had to go last year. Last, last year was year nasty. Was probably, probably the best one. Yeah. yeah. Last year was nasty, bro. Last year was nasty. Well, and we, we'll still wait to see what he does this year, dude. Cause I think, I think yeah. from the, off the start, I mean, this is the, He's coming off of the, like he's he's literally last year almost an MVP candidate or also almost an MVP and he's doing it again now. It's just great to see a guy do it uh, on like like the back end of his career right now. You know what I mean? So I, I can't even say he's at, I can't even say he's out of his prime. So I wouldn't say yeah, he's, he's at the back end. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. he's still right. yeah he's he's still he's definitely still in it. But yeah, I'm I'm like I mentioned that twenty yeah twenty fifteen yeah sixteen season. I that oh, that that might have been one of the crazy yeah, that probably one or two crazy tie like with Russ or whatever as far mm-hmm. as crazy MVP seasons mm-hmm. I've ever seen because he was yeah. averaging thirty shooting like forty five percent from three yeah it was 
Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. The see, that was a season that I think straight up changed the NBA. Like, I feel like before that, people were kind of skeptical about yeah. the whole, you know, but then after that's, that year, it was kind of like, fuck it. That's that's when he got the babyface assassin nickname. I yeah. remember that like it was yesterday. Killing it. Even the moments he had in 2015, uh, like the, the playoffs in 2015, he was killing. Like, he had the Pelicans. You forget that Pelicans game where he hit like the game's yeah. final shot. Yeah. shot. He, he hit that shot in the corner. Yeah. That, yeah, that corner shot. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Then who who else did they get that run? Then 25. I forget. There were some good moments against Houston and I think the conference finals. Man, there were just a lot of moments. Just I saw that's all I that's all I know. So uh <laughs> Curry the Beast, uh part 100. And we, you know, we we, we ain't, ain't much to say about it. We're not gonna overact. It's funny how we took a son's win and made it all about how great Steph Curry is. Yeah, I'm sorry, son. Well, I'm really not, but hey. <laughs> uh Carl dropped this in the chat. Uh, but uh Giannis Antetokounmpo, the reigning uh finals MVP and the reigning NBA champion. Milwaukee Bucks have been off to a really good last couple of games. I feel like we never really talked about a lot of people have been talking about how great the Bucks have been over the last few. They've gone yeah. eight straight. Now the games they've won have been against shitty teams. They got the Thunder, uh the Magic mm-hmm. twice in a row, the Pistons, yeah. Nuggets without Jokic and the Pacers, and I guess the Hornets are actually a pretty good matchup, but it's still like straight wins. Still, still wins, though. Yeah, still wins. Still wins. You know, you're not going to play, yeah. you're not going to play an elite team every single night. You know what I mean? Yeah, he, he had 40 last night against LaMelo. That was a pretty good, he had a, the clutchest bucket of the night. You know, yeah. The game winner, basically, but yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't know. He, yeah, they, they, yeah. The thing about him is he's averaging like 27 points, but he would have to average like 31 or 32 to win because you realize when you win MVPs a couple times, it's yeah. hard to get another one. Yeah, that was a conversation. It was kind of like, it, could he come back and potentially get another one? You know, and it's I don't like it, it's tough. It is tough because after you won those first two, but I, I feel like with him it may be a little bit different because I feel like after winning those first two, we weren't going to see him win another one until he got a ring. Like I feel like the NBA wasn't going to give him another MVP award until he won a championship. Now I think he's got this really strong yeah. case because he's won this championship. People still consider him a lot. Still consider him the best player in the NBA, which I think he has an argument for. For sure. I mean, you look I at what he's he doing. Is. I think he is. Say what? I think he is. Yeah, it's, been, it's between him and Steph. Him and Steph and KD. You got to put KD in that conversation too. Yeah, I'm a. I mean, Carl, I'm, I'm, say, probably, I'm yeah. gonna probably say KD's the best. Yeah. And you know that that I don't. You know, I don't say that life because yeah, I mean, KD versus LeBron. But I'm I'm gonna say KD is. Yeah, the tip and scale I think with Giannis is his defense. You know, out of those three guys, are we all in agreement that it's it's the three best are Curry, uh, Giannis, and uh. uh KD, yeah. are we on the greens for that? Yeah, yeah, but I'm just saying, man, my boy Luca go. He go halfway through the season. We're yeah. going to have another discussion. But, yeah, for right now, yeah, you're right. I feel like Luca's oh, delayed. Oh, I feel like... you, you a Mavericks fan now, too? No, and I was just playing. Hey, oh, man. You, you can declare your fandom any time you want, bro. Nobody's stopping you. No, I can't. No, they beat the Heat, bro, that one time in 2010 or 11 or whatever. I can't be a fan of that. Really? It's you you got to give credit. Always, it's always yeah. a problem when I, when I talk about my favorite teams. But we we let we let Carl pick about 20, 29 different teams. It was two. It was two, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, as I mentioned, I think the tipping scale with Giannis is his defense. Um, that's one thing you can argue. And as I said, I don't we can say all the time he can't shoot. Giannis, can't shoot Giannis free, air ball he, free throws like ain't nothing. All that can be true, but he dominates where he needs to dominate at. You know, last yeah. night, like he loved, like one thing he does really like is like that turnaround jumper at the baseline. I, I really think he's perfecting that shot. And you can look at Giannis and say he's got no offensive bag. I disagree. I think he's found, as Carl said before, a couple, like really actually during the summer, he knows his spots. He knows how to get to him. And he knows where to dominate at. Um, and that's what he does. You know, I think he's perfecting yeah. that turnaround jumper. That's becoming a part of his repertoire uh, permanently. Um, you know, I, I, I think, I mean, what would you right right now as the season is, as we stand and we're going to kind of revisit it, uh, start with Carl here, top three MVP candidates at this, at this current moment. Yeah. But before I say that, I just want, cause you were saying in the summer where I said he just knew how to pick his spots. I think the Bucks need to give me a ring because I, I was saying the whole time, they don't need to let him play the guard point guard position. Let him get, you know, let him get set. And then yeah. let them create off like Drew Holiday dribbling the ball up the court right. and everything. You know, yeah. that was my idea. It worked. They won a ring. I deserve love. <laughs> but um, <laughs> uh, I would probably say right now it's see KD. KD been silently just been right there with Steph. I don't think people been realizing that he he been <laughs> right there with him. But I'm a he didn't drop down this week though a little yeah. bit. So I'm a, I'm gonna put Steph at one. Mm. Uh, Giannis at two and KD at three. Yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at with. Are you are you there around the same area, Blake? 
Yeah, that's what it is. Also, I saw what you. I don't know if you meant to with, with uh, repertoire, but I, I, I like that. I like that. Well, the, you like the you like the usage, the word usage. I like that. I like that. Um, but no, I, I got uh, probably got the same thing as Carl. Step yeah. one, uh, Giannis two, KD three. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, is there anything? What would he have to do? Because I feel like right now Curry's kind of kind of run with it as far as like be that top guy. Like I think it's gonna be very yeah. difficult. Curry's yeah. just gonna have to suck because Giannis can keep doing what he's doing. Curry's gonna have to suck at some point in time for Giannis to take that top spot. But it's like it seems like it's almost like no one's Steph, taking Curry's spot right now. Steph probably go may just get it like based off of just discussion and just people like you know lacking him shooting deep threes. That's just I don't know. That's just what a league is now. Like if you see seeing a person scoring deep threes rather than seeing a person dominating the paint, yeah. they're gonna pick the person that's the three. Rightfully so. Rightfully yeah. so. Rightfully so. That um, is what it is. And to talk about Milwaukee a little bit. This team is definitely, I mean, we always talk about teams making upgrades after they win a title. That was something we talked about a couple of uh, uh, months ago, actually. Um, we talked about with the Lakers, and I, we, we, we're going to leave it in the past, but after you guys won in the bubble, the improvements you made to your roster. On paper, those were some great improvements. Now, you know, uh, you, you kept your defensive core and Kyle Kuzma, or not Kyle Kuzma, Contavious Caldwell-Pope <laughs> and all of those guys. And then you brought on Montrez Harrow and Dennis Schroeder. And then there was always this what could have been thing with that with that team. I think if they were healthy, that would have been. I think they would have repeated as champions if they were healthy and if they had more time together. You know, I think yeah. that I definitely think they would have. On yeah. I, I remember us talking about how great those additions were after those guys came back or after they made those moves to bring those guys into the roster. Yeah, you you definitely right because if you looked at how we was playing defense, like yeah. down like the stretch going into the playoffs, like I remember Alex Russo he yeah. was locking he was locking yeah. people up, getting steals, and then the way we dominated the Suns out of the two out of the first three, we like yeah. blew them out, and yeah. I was like, oh, we got this. And then people yeah. start getting hurt. I'm like, oh shit. Yeah, it was that was a shame. But then again, that's just kind of that thing, you know how how many moves should you make if you just won a championship? And then we see with Golden State, or not Golden State with Milwaukee. I think they re-signed Bobby Portis or extended him or something like that, if I'm correct. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, they did. They should have kept PJ Tucker though. I didn't. Yeah. But I think I think you offset that, you know, Grayson Allen. I mean, Grayson Allen's not giving you anything defensively that Tucker's giving you, but he's much yeah. more effective on the offensive yeah. end than Tucker was. Tucker's yeah. doing next to nothing offensively right now. You know what yeah. I mean? He's not even making yeah. those corner shots anymore. You know, there's not much he's giving you outside he, of being able to he, defend. He wearing too much about changing the shoes each quarter. Right. But yeah. And then, you know, you mentioned how great they got, um, you know, or how, how good they got and get, bringing in Grayson Allen. There are some other newer additions to the team, you know, like uh, Rodney Hood. Um, you know, there's Pat Connaughton, who's playing at an elevated level. Um, and this is a team still without Dante DiVincenzo. You know, we, we keep forgetting yeah, that. Dante. Yeah. yeah I, I forgot he was out. Yeah. yeah you know, you so. Said- you said Rodney Hood, right? I forgot about Rodney. Yeah, Hood. Rodney Hood has kind of been in the rotation. Then also, we saw last night Boogie got in the got in the lineup and then, uh, you know, did a solid job. You know what I mean? Uh, knocked down some. Shots. You said what? A bucket. Yeah, he did. He had seven, I think. Um, you know, but he's knocking down shots. I think he's going to be good as far as far as you know, moving the ball around the perimeter. You know, off the bench. Uh, they kind of got him into some post up situations. A great piece. And then also wait till Brooke Lopez is back, who's one of their better defenders. Yeah. So. I just don't hold when Brooke comes back, they just cut DeMarcus Cousins because I've seen that happen. All right, what was the point of signing them? I know you signed them for Brooke, but just at least keep them on the roster. Yeah. I don't think they will. I think it's good that they have that. Uh, you know, you got Bobby Portis and you got Brooke Lopez. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it's a, it's really a shame. It's really a shame the injuries he had because people don't know he was putting up 25 and 10, actually 27 and 10 one year with ease probably with like five assists on top of that like it, it was no doubt it, like I, I keep saying no doubt in my mind if boogie was healthy uh he'd be the best big man in the nba by far right now yeah you know? but but the suckish teams he was on with the king we were calling him we people were still across the league calling him the best center oh, like over a five-year span four to five Bro- years Joel Embiid's best form isn't better than DeMarcus Cousins' best form that we've seen. I, yeah, I, it's 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 not. Because because DeMarcus Cousins, the thing about him, he has more moments to me where he's more aggressive than mm-hmm. Joel. Yeah. And he probably dominates in the paint more because, you know, Joel kind of shoots too many jumpers sometimes when he's tired, and you can tell. Yeah. DeMarcus? Yeah, yeah. what are you saying? Are you say, Blake? I said kind of. He does. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, literally, DeMarcus was the whole package. He couldn't pass like Jokic, but he was a very good passer and was is a, is a, was a better passer than Joel Embiid. Um, shoots it 
almost at the same level as Embiid does. So you can kind of just balance all that out. And then as you mentioned, better, I think better, more versatile as far as playmaking goes. And he, like we'll see possessions where he's bringing the ball up court. I keep saying, I remember they were running pick and rolls yeah. with him and Anthony Davis back when they were on the Pelicans. Right, that was that was a beautiful thing. That was scary. Yeah, that was scary. And the crazy thing is he was that good and he's not even like that athletic. If you right. really think about it. Right. He will dunk on your ass. I remember he no, had he, a No, but I mean, yeah, he's six, he like six, 11, seven feet. So you, you, you go ahead and moments. But I'm saying like, he wasn't athletic, like a Joel and B was, yeah. or even Anthony Davis when he played center. He's, yeah. I, I Anthony Davis. Like, Joel and B ain't that, isn't that athletic too, so. I don't know. I don't know. He be yeah. He he be doing windmills and he he more athletic. That's he, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's uh, tall windmills. He I say this. He athletic than the more average center. A lot of centers sometimes aren't, but he's more athletic than the average center. Yeah. Blake, give me your top three most athletic centers in the NBA right now. Right now. Yeah. Ooh. That's tough, ain't it? I know who won. Mitchell Robinson. Okay, I knew you're gonna. I think I knew you're gonna say him. Over uh, Carl Anthony Towns is more athletic than him. Yeah, Cat may be the most athletic. Maybe he is. I'm, that not, I'm, not, I'm not going. I'm not ranking him. I think I'm just just okay. the guys. Okay. okay. I'll say uh, Mitchell Robinson, Carl uh, Anthony Towns, and I got a name in mind. Rob Williams. Oh, maybe. Maybe DeAndre Aiden. Maybe. Nah, Rob Williams is more athletic than John DeAndre Aiden. Is he? Is he? Oh, is hell not? yeah. Oh, y'all forgot about... Uh, nah, does Jer- Jared Allen play center, right? Am I tripping? Jared yeah, Allen. No, Jared Allen I, is I, a, okay, I say Jared so. Allen. He's yeah, up I, there. I put Jared Allen there, too. I don't know. Well, Ke- yeah, I'll put Cat now. I'll put um, Jared Allen Because Anthony Davis don't play center because it's a consistent basis. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think. There may be Rudy Gobert. <laughs> no. No way. Carl, you have an expression on his face. I ain't with, I ain't with that one. <laughs> he, he athletic though yeah yeah but yeah i mean it, it's really good to see him back on a roster and as carl mentioned I, I think worst case scenario i don't think they're going to cut him but i do think worst case scenario is that he falls out of the rotation i can definitely see that once lopez is back you know um because i don't even think portis is going to continue to start if lopez is back in the lineup so then that's just another roster bug spot but guy portis yeah <laughs> man but he bobby been hooping though man bobby yeah he, yeah he a hooper i remember when he was with the bulls he was hooping. But- yeah man but yeah, this team, yeah, they, they, I think they are more dangerous than they were last season. We always talk about that Eastern Conference, and I mean, it's, it's always. I mean, I don't think there's been, there's not even a clear cut right now in the East, which is always dope to see. Even with Brooklyn kind of maybe finding their stride, there's just no clear cut. I still think that Milwaukee uh, can come in and then beat a Brooklyn Nets team in the seven game series. I think it's still possible, even when they have a healthy Kyrie. You know, if that ends up having, if that ends up, if he ends up coming back or whatever. But yeah, you just love seeing a team after they won a title make the right moves and bring guys back, you know, and they just primed themselves, uh, put themselves in the right position uh, to make another big time run. You know, they definitely did just that. Uh, but shout out to Giannis. He's hooping. Uh, Chris Middleton. I mean, the eight game winning streak started when Middleton got back in the lineup and he hasn't been his best self. I think he finally had a 20 point game just last night uh, against yeah. uh, Charlotte. Um, but once he starts to get going, you know, they will be that much, much, they will be that much more better. Same with holiday. Holiday hasn't really found his stride this year. I think he may be, like three or four points worse than what he was last season. But, you yeah. know, yeah. Yeah, I ain't worried about players like that because they've never really had, like, great regular seasons. Yeah. It's, it's, it's about them in the playoffs. That's where yeah. I'm, I'm starting to – yeah. they showed me last year they're legit. In the playoffs. That's facts. So, That's yeah. facts. Yeah, I don't know. That is facts. Uh, Blake. Uh, you're talking about Kyrie, too. Hey, he's talking about hey, – I wouldn't be surprised if he get traded by the end of the – Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it just doesn't make sense. It, it, it makes the most sense. I mean, from the beginning, it was kind of like with Kyrie – um. It just seemed like because the, the I'm not going to get too much in the vaccine, but the mandate was straight state by state. And it did make sense because we were acting like it was crazy to trade him. It wasn't crazy because it's kind of like, yeah, he's not playing. Me. So why would I like keep yeah. paying him or not paying him? And he's not playing like it's smart. I'm sure he understand that if they trade yeah. him. Yeah. Like if, if he goes to Philly well, I, now. Yeah, I know he's talking about, uh, he was talking about he's going to retire if they trade him. I don't know how true that is. But... No, he said that wasn't true. He said, don't believe I'm not going to retire. Oh, really? I mean, I'm going to retire. Yeah. He said on Insta- like, I think Instagram live. I was damn near panicking because if Kyrie retire, I'm gonna be sad as hell. Yeah, Kyrie, no, nah, no, nah, he not. I think, I think somebody just came up. ESPN report came. He said, "Yeah, I'm not retiring. I don't know where." See, I don't know whether to believe some of reports. You just don't know. Sometimes it's really that simple. Did y'all see the report? I meant to ask y'all about this. Did y'all see the report that came out uh, where they say Jason Tatum is only worried about Jason Tatum and nobody? I, saw, else. I meant to send that to y'all. Yeah, I yeah. saw that. What y'all? What do you think of that? That's dumb. How, how do, how, do, how would you he he don't even talk a lot for like you like enough for you to even think that 
Once they again, this is coming up with shit, bro. It's, it's one of those made up ass narratives because, like I said, I, I always look at how your team reacts to you. When I see the Celtics look at Jason Tatum and interact with them, they do see him as a leader. Now, is he the best version of a leader? He has some he has some some stuff to fill out there, but that doesn't mean they don't like him as a teammate. That doesn't mean he cares yeah. for himself, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, he's just he's really if you want to be honest, he's a stretch, he's a stretch for that can just really score. He's, he's not dom he's not a dominant passer. Yeah, he's just a score. It's, yeah. it's been great players in the NBA that have been just scores. It's not the end of the it's yeah. We gotta get out of this myth and this idea that because you're an inefficient, okay, because we know they're nice for Tatum's inefficient, but just because well, that I'm gonna be honest, that probably just started this year because probably for a while he was efficient. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. But if a guy has off shooting nice and he keeps shooting, does that necessarily mean he's a bad teammate? Hell no. But that's the easiest thing for them to say because I'm I swear to God, all they can get that from is say he don't he don't care about his team because look at his percentage. That's, that's like, the that thing in the world. I mean some people because some players approach the game differently. Some players approach it, okay. If I'm if I'm eight for uh Eight for twenty, that means I ain't shooting enough. I need to be eight for thirty. Right. That's how Kobe. That's how Kobe shot. A lot of and people that, shot like that. And I remember watching. Um. Uh. There's a. I keep mentioning this page I follow. Ball don't stop. Uh. And the guy was on the the, the host of that podcast on it was on a, a Gilbert Arenas' show, and then he was saying, when you're when you're a player and you're a scorer and you're looked at as a primary scorer on your team or something like that, you don't give a fuck about inefficient shooting. You're gonna keep shooting it because yeah. you. You know what I mean. Yeah, Gilbert, if you, if you say Gilbert, Gilbert Marines actually was the same way. He yeah. was an efficient, like, scorer, but if he had off nights, he's not going to stop shooting. Why? Yeah. It don't even make sense. Are hey, there you, a way? You're yeah, due, go ahead. You're due, dude, you're, you're due eventually, bro. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to happen. And, and it, 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 obviously, there are ways you can affect the game outside of just scoring. And I think that's something yeah. we all want to see from Tatum. Yeah. It's a kind of, you know, if you don't, if you're not scoring, you still got to find ways to be effective in playmaking and all of that. We get that. Yeah. But yeah. this made up stuff where we're saying he's a bad teammate because he has inefficient shooting nights and he shoots the ball a lot. He's the best player on his team is going to happen. You know what I mean? I think right now, as I said, people just want to have something to blame. And it's so, you know what I mean? So people yeah, just look at the numbers and then just. It'd be them dudes, bro. I'm telling you, it'd be them dudes that never even play high school sports, or any type of sports. And they just sit there and just think of something to write to get yeah. attention for their paper or paper or whatever, the Tribune, whatever, the little notepad they be writing on. Yeah. <laughs> the notepad, the notepad <laughs> newspaper. Little, no, little notepad, little iPad they be writing on. And like I said, it's bad because that stuff straight up fucks up people's reputation. You know what it I mean? Does. Like, I feel like the perception right now. What are you going to say? Locker room chemistry, too. Yeah. Yeah, just made up stuff. You know what I mean? Like, I heard someone say this about you in the media, and that can affect how to – yeah, that's that's true. Because, I mean, think about the Sexton thing, and I mentioned it a ton. People just came out and said Sexton was a bad teammate. Like, where did you get that from? But, I I, but, I, but yeah. that came out, and I just feel like that's the perception now. And it's just not true, you know? So that type of stuff is, is dumb and dangerous, in my opinion, because it's like yeah. – yeah, Colin Sexton, not even that much of a talker for real. You don't really see him talk a lot. So how you just go come up with that out of nowhere? Yeah. This bull bullshit narratives because people because uh, let's face it, Boston is like next to the Lakers, they're one of the most popular, they're probably the most popular sports franchise or franchise in all of basketball. You know, so when they when they're not getting their stuff, yeah. you know, when they're not getting it going, there yeah, they are. Celtics Lakers. They are no, they are in sports, they this sports period, just too football too. Boston mm -hmm. is. If you ask anybody that's no shit about basketball, they're gonna name like the Celtics or like the Heat or the Lakers or some shit. And they talk about like really good teams. Gonna, they probably named the Warriors before they named the Celtics. Maybe, but they they named yeah. the Celtics, bro. Yeah. Depends on how depends on where you grew up. Depends on how you grew up. But everybody, yeah. But it's Boston is that's that's Warriors, like war, Warriors didn't always haven't been, they didn't have spurts where they're not good. Boston all for the most part. Yeah, I think that's, that's just recency bias, really. Yeah. Well, no, because they have a culture of being like they, they are they the winningest for they had the most championships in uh, best in, in NBA history. I think, think they tied. Oh, I'm talking about the Warriors when you were talking about Carl was talking about. I was uh, talking about. Oh, okay, Warriors. yeah, he was talking about the Warriors. When yeah, you but still, yeah, I think it, I think it's that thing where you're in Boston and then if they're not playing well, you got to scapegoat yeah. the best player or whatever is bullshit. So yeah, let me let me let me ask you this because the Knicks they're one of the most historic franchises. I have no idea why they've won one championship. Makes no sense. I guess it's just because it's, it's New York. It's, it's New York. York. It's still, they they suck as far as just w having wins and like look, over the last thirty look. years. But you can't say they haven't put. They, you can't say they haven't put together good teams over the last. No, couple. I mean in terms of being like that historic of a franchise, but you don't have the championships like the Warriors or he, uh, Warriors, even Heat, Lakers, or uh, Boston does, and you're still up there with them. Well, it's, it's, I don't. It's, it's because it's New York, though. Yeah, yeah. it's New York. Look at I'm taking other sports. Look at the look at the Giants, especially look at the Jets. 
That's Jets true. have been terrible for almost They're, 20 plus years. And they they say, as long yeah. as we've been alive, they suck. They yeah, they still, they still get more media attention than teams that have, are actually having winning seasons. So yeah. it's, I mean, it's just New York. It's one of the yeah. entertainment yeah. capital. Speak, so, speaking of, I'm, I'm going to get it away from football. See, football, we got a little – St. Louis got a uh, $791 million settlement, you know. That's not that's not going anywhere. Yeah, yeah that movie, that money ain't going nowhere. I read about that it's shit not, the other they day. They're going to put it towards that dumb – I don't even like soccer. That's they're not, soccer they're, they're, I trust, they, they're not putting it towards anything. That, that money is getting pocketed. They need to get up. They need to give us the Chargers because they L.A. don't care about the Chargers. They just care about the Rams. What are the arguments against St. Louis having a basketball team, a pro basketball team? I don't know. I don't know why. Because we are, would you say St. Louis is, St. Louis got enough basketball talent. It, like, I'm serious. Like, we've had Tatum, we've had Larry Hughes, we've had David Lee, Brad Beal, Nafisa coming in for the WNBA. We've had a bunch of people come from St. Louis, and then people act like St. Louis just yeah, can't Caleb, have it. Caleb, 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 Caleb Love, yeah, come on, man. I feel like I'm missing some names, too. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, we man. did have a St. Louis Hawk in fourth. Very long time ago. You know what I mean? Man, we need a team at St. Louis, a basketball we team. Yeah, we had a team I, I back like when they, I feel like they put a well, I don't know, I don't know about they if they put a uh an NFL team, but I know that soccer stadium they already got. I think people view St. Louis really as a, a, for some reason a soccer city. They do because of Luffy, the Luffy yeah. soccer stuff, but is that, is that right? I don't know why, but I don't know why either because I don't know. I, I I've never maybe it's because I've never paid attention to it. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. I'm not going to say I really dislike soccer, but I can't keep my attention span, can't keep my, like, I can't keep, just keep watching it like I keep watching basketball or, you know, football, even baseball. Yeah. I respect it because this is, I, I think it's one of the toughest oh, yeah. sports because you're literally running, yeah, but cool. I can't sit and watch it. I'm also too lazy to learn new sports. You know what I mean? Like, hockey is hockey is fun to watch, but I, I don't feel like sitting and watching and, like, Bro. tapping into everybody. I watch hockey. I, I like watch hockey. Life, I watch hockey over uh soccer, even cricket. Hell, I watch cricket. I, I, I love watching uh, – that's why I want to go to Blues game. I want to see them fight or something. I want to see somebody get uh, – nah, I, I ain't going to no hockey game, bro. Yeah. No. I, I ain't gonna lie. When the blues were, when the blues were winning, I, I low key wanted to go because I remember it was hyped as hell. I remember uh, Jackson was hey. on actually the front cover at uh, SCL Dispatch. Yeah, yeah, Ooh. yeah. I think yeah. I think everybody Jackson. could even Jackson. Jackson. Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah, I think that nobody like we. I, like I just started watching hockey because they were winning. And they from St. Louis. I was rooting for the Blues. Act like yeah. I knew who was on the team. Yeah. I was watching them games safely for real. Yeah. Play you were. Game. You sure were. You did tell us that you yeah. sure. Were. Yeah, I just kind of I, I saw it and I just took credit. I was like, man, I've been with them since day one. That's my team. That's my city. Now I ain't give a fuck about no hockey. You want to cross game? <laughs> oh yeah, no. When they won, I I posted on my Snapchat. I said we won. <laughs> like, like you ain't watched no blues game. That's what my mom told me. I was over there getting hey, hyped. She said, "Boy, you ain't watched no blues game in damn your life." Hey, they asked me who won the MVP. I said, "Some dude. I don't know his name." Yeah, somebody, some Russian dude. I don't know. You know, they got what? <laughs> yeah. That's when in doubt, just say he was Russian. And he say played. He Russian. Or, or, or can no, say say he's Canadian. Yeah, that's yeah, that too. Yeah, that's yeah, it. You're right. Um, Blake, your Hawks. Um, I don't even talk about the Hawks, but I want to say another guy I think has put himself maybe, maybe yeah. out of the top five in the MVP conversation is Trey Young. Yeah. I got five straight 30 point games. Um, last night he had 33, eight rebounds, 10 assists. Uh, this is the most efficient season of his career, too, both from general field goal percentage and from deep. Uh, we haven't seen him shoot it this high, and I know that's been a criticism from me also, too, of, of him is is his inefficient shooting or whatever. I think there are times he can be a volume guy. I question his shot selection sometimes. I still do at times, but um, at least he's efficient. You know, when the numbers are showing you're efficient, you know, I can't criticize you way too much. Um, and the Hawks have one of the best offenses right now in the entire league. I think right now they've got the second highest offensive rating. Uh, so, yeah, he's, he's making this big time uh, MVP type of run. Uh, and you really just love to see it from a guy like him who's coming off of a year. It's always good to see a guy, um, you know, come off of and, and build off of a great previous season. I think the biggest thing was Trey yeah. was his coming out party in the playoffs last year. Um, yeah. bringing especially, that team especially in New York. Especially in New York, you know. Bringing said, oh, did y'all see um, somebody voted him in for mayor in New York? Yeah, someone oh, wrote yeah. it. Yeah. Hey, I still didn't see that video. I, y'all, y'all had a video or something y'all was talking about when the uh, Nick fans were out there. Was that against when they faced the Hawks or something and they were going crazy this season? No, that was this. That was like the first game uh, against Boston. That was, that I was, still, I still haven't seen that video. I'm that video was hella funny. They was, they was getting it in. Okay, yeah, dope. but you, yeah, Trey, yeah, you go, Trey Young. Yeah, he been, yeah, he been lighting it up. He crossed. Who did he cross? Some dude. He crossed. Indiana, some, yes. He crossed somebody. He got, uh, I think it was um, uh, Handy. What's the not not uh, Keelan uh, Keelan Martin. Okay, uh, yeah. From Indiana last night, he crossed him up. 
Uh, but yeah, it's great to see him doing this. This is a guy that I was, y'all know, I was skeptical as hell about Trey uh, yep. when he was, yeah. I, I used to stay arguing. Yeah. He and Blake wasn't. Yeah. Oh, I think. Oh, no, Carl was. I don't think. Carl yeah. Was. I, yeah. I believed in him. Yeah. I believed in him. Yeah. Um, it's, it's great to see him do this. I, I think, you know, finally he's kind of putting it together because there were those a couple of years, I, I think, where people were kind of like, we don't know yet, you know, is he this team, should he be this team's point guard and be so uh, such of a high volume shooter and, and sometimes with his decision making it's a little bit off. Uh, but now, as I said, it, you know, we saw him last season and this season he's bringing it back, he's building off of it. Um, and then, I mean, would you guys say looking at it now, because I still remember seeing a meme no, we want to mean, but it was like a, a graphic where they're saying worst draft mistakes and they had the Luca or worst draft trades and they had the Luca thing. Would you guys say finally when we're yeah, yeah, when we look at it from a larger perspective, would you guys say that right now the Luca and Trey trade is balanced out? Would you guys yeah. say it's straight balanced yeah, out? It, yeah, they they both benefited mm -hmm. from you know making that trade, but I still would pick Luca as the better player because I'm always going to take upside of height over a dude that's 6'2 or 6'3 yeah. to lead a team. But, yeah, it's, it's pretty even. Before a franchise standpoint, I mean, I can't even say that because, look, even if Luka was on this Hawks team, would you say if Luka was on this Hawks team, they'd be – I can't even say that because they straight up could have went to the finals last year if they were healthy. So I was going to ask yeah. if Luka was on this Hawks team, would they be a better team? But I can't even say that because they, they probably, basically – they were a couple yeah, they games – Yeah, they'd probably be the same – like the same actual team. I can't see them because Trey just kind of – they're ha they actually they actually have similar games. It's just very one similar. Sort of, it's, yeah. it's pretty much the difference. Yeah. One shorter has more range, but their game is like pick and roll. You could like I, I they they're definitely gonna run pretty much the same offense with Luca. Maybe um, more versatility. You know, Mike, you yeah. can put Luca off the ball a lot more than you can with Trey. Yeah, I, you know, I can debate Trey more athletic than Luca, but they both really not the most yeah. athletic yeah. person. But yeah. that's what make them great though. They they not even that athletic and they still killing dudes on the court. Yeah. Trey's got a lot of James Harden in him. You know, when you watch him play, I kind of get flashbacks of when, when he was doing under Dan Tony. I mean, what he's still doing now, too. But when Dan Tony, you know, kind of got him there and then got yeah. him in a bunch of pick and rolls and all of that. And he's doing it with Clint Capella, too. So yeah, there's that entire said, thing. This made me think this is a little trivia question. I want to see if y'all know where did James Harden go to college? I just want to see Arizona Fresno. State. Oh, okay. I just want to see. Yeah, I just want you to say Fresno State, State Blake? I said Arizona State. He Arizona. said Arizona. He said Arizona State. Okay. Yeah. Fresno. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Trey May. He's been hooping uh, definitely in that MVP conversation. And Atlanta's looking like a pretty solid team. I mentioned offensively, they're right behind. Uh, I think they're, I forget they're right behind. But they have one of the highest offensive ratings in the NBA right now. You'd love to see that with the young team. Um, more credit to Nate McMillan, and they have this efficient offensive system. Guys are buying in. You know, John Collins, I think on if John Collins would have decided to leave, he can probably be – 25 or something like that at points a game on a worse team but he's buying in you know i think he's accepted his role after that contract extension that he got i think maybe a summer or two ago uh yeah. these, these guys are buying into what to what uh you know nate mcmillan has given him so they, they I, I, i'm not seeing anything that i think i'd say they're better than what they were last year and i'm not going to say they perfectly built off of their playoff success because there are just still things we have to see from them defensively that we actually did see from them last year uh but you know like i said once again shout to trey and i think it's more about him and what he's been able to do. I mean, a five straight 30 point games is no joke, you know, and I think that's what jumped him into this MVP conversation as of late. So, yeah, shout out to the man, yeah. Trey Young, for sure. Yeah, they're right behind the Cavs at 12 and 10. So they're yeah. right there at the seven, seven. spot, you know, at seven spot. Yeah, Lake, I mean, and the, yep, and the Celtics are 12 and 10 tied with them. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. The six, six to six, yeah, six to eight, they all 12 and 10. That's kind of really, weird. yeah, yeah, weird. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's very weird stuff. Uh, yeah, Trey, yeah, he's def he's definitely kind of you know um improved his efficiency. Yeah, he, he improved definitely improved his efficiency over these last probably week. You said what five games? Yeah, yeah probably yeah. a week or so. Starting start to find that groove. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I know Blake was a little quiet about his hawks. I ain't hear him yeah. say nothing yeah. about him. And I know why. Well, they they got a little hot now, so we'll see what they yeah. up to later in the yeah. season. I think they want seven of their last eight. Let me see the wins they've gotten. Yeah, eight of the last ten. Eight of the last Thank ten. You. Okay, yeah. And like I said, still want to see some things defensively. You know, right now we're talking. If you want to get onto that next level, you're just not going to make it in the NBA right now. There's there's no world for a team that can't do it on both ends at all. You know, you look at the last couple of championships, finals matchups or whatever. Anybody in the East Finals, you didn't have a team that was just bad defensively at all. You know, yeah. so. Still got to see some things from them on that end. And a lot of it could be the point that Hunter hasn't been there for a lengthy amount of time. I forgot why. I forgot why Hunter's out of the lineup. 
Um, yeah, hurt with some, I, I don't know, but I know some of the fans are kind of like they be like he always stays hurt. They're kind of yeah. upset. I know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I like what they're. I love what they're doing. Uh, they've got great bench pieces. I've seen Lou Williams have a couple of good games. He hasn't been amazing the entirety of the year, um, but he's had a couple of good ones. And Danilo Gallinari is one of the better bench scorers this season. So great stuff from the Hawks. Uh, great things, especially from that boy Trey Young. Uh, he's getting it going. They're getting it going. And you just uh, you love to see it, man. Um, was there anything? Yeah. Else? Oh, were you gonna say, Carl? Oh no, I was saying see, we were talking about the East real quick. What, like, if you all had to put your money on it right now, who is coming out of East to go to the finals? Milwaukee. Okay. As things are right now, I'm, I'm assuming Brooklyn isn't there with Kyrie. So I say as things okay. are, I'm going to Milwaukee. Okay, yeah. See, see, my thing is, I don't know. Milwaukee the, Chicago. The Bulls, them Bulls. I, I, yeah. Even I, don't, Milwaukee, I, I, I might kind of be prematurely picking them as to do that, but I know for, like, probably for a fact, the heat, the heat looked really good too. When Bam Adebayo comes back, they're gonna make a run with the with the Bucks for sure. They eat, that East is stacked, man. It's it's really really stacked. It's gonna be really fun to see, man. I think we got we really got um uh we got disappointed last year because I think there's a lot of extra stuff happening that didn't need to happen. I think that's kind of what like with the playoffs, guys got hurt and everything like that. Hopefully everything uh-huh. stays. Uh, hopefully hopefully everything stays solid, but. Uh, I think I got Milwaukee. Miami is definitely a one you have to consider because I mentioned a couple episodes ago how great they are offensively to match with their defense. Um, And we Mm -hmm. haven't seen Jimmy Butler play his last couple, and we haven't seen Bam. So this team hasn't really been at their healthiest. So if you see their record fade, it's because guys just aren't there. Like, Mm -hmm. I I forgot. What's the timetable on Bam right now? I think it's like four to six weeks. I remember this was something. Yeah. That's a a, a month. Like, yeah. yeah. Probably like a month and a half or something. Months and some change, yeah. Yeah. I know one thing they need to stop making them jokes about Kyle Lowry on it. Uh, on I don't Instagram. know what I don't know what that's about. It's not even funny. That's fun. weird. Yeah, that's, that's weird. Man, it's time you laughed at a couple of them. I laughed it at like the though. first or second one. It did, and they keep making it. It was like the it's not even like that. you like the Spotify playlist thing. Your songs of the year. They had his playlist. It's kind of disturbing. But it was t- basically. Yeah, yeah. Y'all it was, it was Yeah, it was hooray, hooray, hooch, mama. One of them. Yeah, and then it was some other. Yeah. <laughs> Circus alone. Uh some ludicrous songs on there. Did y'all see the Myers Leonard uh playlist? That shit killed me. Uh-huh. That was, that was uh-huh. yeah, it was that an was inside, hilarious. yeah. It was yeah. like Christian. They put they put I think yeah. I still got it on my IG story. Let me see what it was. Um Myers, one was, it was hilarious. Make sure y'all listen to the gospel though, boy. Uh they got uh Myers Leonard. They said in words in Paris, other in words, trap in words, stepping on in words, and God's not dead. <laughs> like what? Yeah, man. Um, but that does uh, that, man. I think that's pretty much it. Unless there's anything else y'all wanted to cover or talk about, nothing. Uh, oh yeah, they had uh Patrick Beverly's. Remember his? His is like all like really hood. The Spotify street. playlist. Yeah, rugged, rugged. Yeah, rugged rap. Rugged rap. Menace. Menace. And then rap. It said, and it, yeah, and it said, yeah, his genre was menace. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that does it, y'all. Uh, don't forget to uh like and subscribe on YouTube. Shout out, thank you guys for getting us uh to uh 211 right now. I think that's where we are. So we beat our 210 goal. Next big, big goal is 250. Um, and we're gonna get there. I, I, yeah. Really, it's really three, it's really 300. But really, uh, yeah, 300. Next, goal, next goal is a million, right? We're gonna, well, we gonna hey. get to a million one day. We're gonna get to that one day for sure. Hey, we get to it, we get to a million. You'll know how I act. I right, right. I come on here with a rolly. Right. Party here. Yeah, man. <laughs> party here. For sure. Uh, but yeah, man, catch us on uh well, this episode's gonna be out tomorrow morning. And you will, I don't know why I said that because you people are just gonna listen to it in real time. Yeah, they know. Yeah, they and know. Today is Thursday, people, and tomorrow is Friday. Right, right. That's That's what I know. Yeah. Uh, and we'll see y'all next time on uh Monday morning. Yep.